Hey guys, how's it going? I've got a really cool video for you today, but I'm gonna start with a story. Now, two days ago, my dad came to me and said, hey, I found a really cool car on Craigslist. And I said, you show me cool cars on Craigslist like every 13 minutes, how is this one different? And he said, ah, this one is four wheel drive. And being a big off-road guy, I was like, yes, that sounds cool. He said, this one is just $4,000 and it's in great shape. Then of course I got really interested and I said, Dad, what is this magnificent $4,000 vehicle you were telling me about? And he said, it's a Daihatsu Rocky. And my heart sank a little bit because I've seen pictures of the Rocky, I knew a little bit about it, but it really didn't seem all that cool to me. So we drove to Denver, we took a look at it. It seemed okay, but I still wasn't all that excited. And then we drove it 45 minutes from the owner's house here after we bought it and now I am totally sold on the Rocky. Yeah, I think this is the only car that should ever exist in the entire world. This 4,000 Daihatsu Rocky we bought one hour ago, it's brilliant. I, I'm in love with this car. And in this video, we are going to talk about why this is such a cool car, why you need to buy one like right now. As you're watching the video, go out, find one and buy one and why you should buy this over pretty much everything. A Bronco, forget the new Bronco, Daihatsu Rocky way better. Now, we should explain what it is because you probably have already clicked out of the video watching an annoying nerd tell you about a car that you've never heard of. This is a real car, I promise you. They actually brought this into the United States. This isn't some weird import that we went through some back alley to get. It's a real SUV that was sold here in the US for just a few years by a company which is the biggest company you've never heard of, Daihatsu. Now, Daihatsu sells cars around the world and I know them primarily for the really small cars they sell in Japan called K cars. But believe it or not, they're a proper company. In fact, they are owned entirely by Toyota as of 2016. But back in the 80s, they decided to make a go of it here in the US. For just four years, 1988 through 1992, they brought over two models to compete with the world here in America, which was a massive market in the late 80s. They brought over this kind of small economy car called the Charade which is just a horrible name. And then they brought over this. This is called the Rocky. This is a four wheel drive convertible SUV. This one is a 1990 and this was meant to compete with the onslaught of SUVs throughout the 1980s. So let's kind of take a quick look back. I'm probably gonna miss a bunch, but from America you had the Broncos, the Bronco 2 more precisely in this size segment. You had uh, the S10 Blazer. Um, back when this car was new in 1990, you had the Wrangler, the first generation of the Wrangler. Uh, from Japan, you had Forerunner, Mitsubishi Montero, Suzuki Sidekick slash Samurai, Dodge Raider. I'm probably missing a ton of them. But the point is there were a huge, oh, Nissan Pathfinder. There were a huge number of four-wheel drives. And the Rocky was an interesting one because it was bigger than like a si uh, sa Samurai, right? The Samurai, which we've owned, uh, was a really small, cute little Jeep thing. But it was smaller than a Wrangler. So it kind of fits right in between. and. First of all, design-wise, I think it's brilliant. It's, it's, it's really clever because it, it's short, it's tall, but most importantly for the late 80s, it's wide. So look at this. This is a factory wide body kit on it from uh, Daihatsu. And in fact, abroad, these were sold kind of around the world. I think they were called the Foreza. Let me know in the comment section below if I'm right. I think they were also called the Rugger and then the, uh, I kid you not, Rugger and then the Four Track in the UK. But here in the United States, they made them extra wide because if you remember in 88, what was going on? Bronco 2s would roll over every time you looked at them wrong. Samurais would roll over at the light gust of a fart. So Daihatsu said, look, if we're gonna come back, we need to make it wide. And they did. And then they made every other mistake in the book and they never sold, which is why they left in 1992 because the Rocky was only available with a manual transmission. And Americans in the 1980s, and especially Americans today, want nothing to do with shifting their own gears. So here it is, five-speed manual transmission. And I'll show you what it's made it to. Let's go ahead and look underneath the hood. Now, I've actually never popped the hood of this vehicle. I'm sorry, if I mess it up. Ooh, first try. Do you see that? On camera, first try. This is a 1.6-liter four-cylinder engine, 16 valves, fuel injection. And it's got about 94 horsepower, about 94 pound-feet of torque. And to be honest, here in America, there's not a lot of information I could find about the Rocky. So you guys out there who own these, you guys in the comment section below, please let me know what I'm messing up. 
tell me about these cars because the Wikipedia page is super spartan. There's not a lot of other sources covering the Rocky. We're kind of blazing new ground to some extent here, at least in the United States. So tell me everything because I want to know everything about it. But as far as I know, this is a Daihatsu only engine. Uh, it runs like a little sewing machine. It's fuel injected. And there's really not much else to say. It's a darn side faster than the 87 Samurai we owned. Um, it's a darn side slower than the Wrangler YJ I owned, but uh, you know, it seems like a pretty, pretty solid little brick. Now we'll kind of talk about the side here. This is kind of the, the rocky uh, party trick. It is a true proper convertible. So the rear portion is this big fiberglass panel. The whole rear end comes off as one enormous piece. You can kind of see. But then, believe it or not, so does this front panel. So it's it's kind of like a Wrangler, actually, or kind of like a Bronco, except better than a Bronco because this is a Rocky people. This is the real deal. And the reason it's better than the, than the Bronco is because, uh, well, I'll get there in a sec when we get on the road, but uh, in the rear, spare tire mounted on the tailgate. This one does have a chrome bumper, but it also has a big toe poking through what looks to be a hitch uh, max trailer weight, 1,000 1, pounds. All right, so it may not tow a lot, but that's okay because take a look at the storage capacity. It's got a big swing gate, as was pretty common with a lot of the Japanese off-roaders. Um, and then it has a rear bench, and the rear bench seat folds forward, but then it also tumbles. And when you have it tumbled, for a tiny vehicle, this is uh, significantly shorter than the first-gen Wrangler huge amounts of space. I mean, this is a, I've owned a, a, a Wrangler YJ, the first gen, and this is probably more usable in a lot of cases, even though it's dimensionally smaller. Uh, we will have to get the top off this thing because I really want to see what that's like. But look at this, this is funny. <laughs> see this weird thing that holds onto the rear window? I think what this is for is you undo it, and then when the top is off, you actually use this kind of mechanism to pull out the rear window. That's a kind of a weird, weird, weird thing they did. So Alex, do you want to kind of open up this, that door and we'll talk about the interior? Yep. Right. So this particular Rocky has um, 89,735 miles on it. I believe they are original because look at the seats and the upholstery. We have to clean it up, like I said, because we just picked it up, so it's kind of covered in leaves and some debris, but I mean, there's no cracks in the dashboard. There's really not a lot wrong with it. All right, there is a couple things wrong with it. The AC doesn't work. Kind of a bummer because it's like a thousand degrees outside. It's got a horrible aftermarket radio in it. Um, and when someone was doing the aftermarket radio, they put the speakers in so badly that they fell out. Real bummer there. But once you get past the terrible aftermarket modifications with the sound system, the interior is really cool. It's like very 1980s boxy. So everything is squared off. Everything is... Uh, just super retro. I like this oh you know what bar. Um, it's really solid too. And then in the middle, just like kind of the older Monteros, this does have a inclinometer there in the center, which moves back and forth as you go up and over some obstacles. But very simple interior. No airbag. You've got the uh, Daihatsu logo there on the steering wheel. Tiny little Japanese horn. But here's why this I think is in a lot of ways better than so many new four wheel drives, including the Bronco. It's hard to explain just how well assembled this car is. It's over, well, almost 30 years old now, and everything is so well put together. I mean, the dash doesn't rattle whatsoever. You can hit the biggest pothole at 60 miles an hour, the dash doesn't rattle. Pretty much all the switches work. Uh, the uh, Someone broke the windshield wiper, but the windshield wipers work. The turn signal works. Uh, the heater works. The shifter is tight as a drum. Short throws, too. Um, so many of the old Wranglers have these horrible, really long throws. This one's short. Look at the uh, precision of the four-wheel drive knob. That's it. That's how you get into four-wheel drive. It does have a true low range as well. The steering in this car is better than the new Wrangler. It's better than the Forerunner. It's precise. It's quick. And it's it's just unbelievable that they could get a proper four-wheel drive vehicle to drive so car like back in 1990 in this case. It's amazing. Now, let's go ahead and take it for a ride. And we'll give you kind of a quick sense of what it's like to drive the Rocky. Bear with Alex as he closes the door. Good work, Alex. Thank you. I need you to put on your seatbelt so we can release 94 horsepower properly. But look, Daihatsu key in the ignition. Uh, 
the fuel pump in this is aftermarket and it's louder than a cement mixer, so we're gonna have to fix that. Are you ready? Let's Here goes the fuel go pump. Yeah, that does not sound healthy, but apart from the fuel pump. Yeah, I know, that's ridiculous. Is there like a Tesla battery back there powering that fuel pump? I don't know what's going on. But once you get past the fuel pump, it's just astonishing the level of quality. In 1990, the, the brakes are perfect, the clutch is perfect. Uh, the steering, like I said, this is an old school short wheelbase four wheel drive vehicle. You flick the wheel, there's no play. Like none at all, it's direct, which is crazy for a vehicle with a tiny, tiny wheelbase. Even the ride is pretty good. This is a lot better than the Samurai. And the cool thing is, uh, this little engine doesn't make a lot of power, but it's, it's pretty quick and it revs to the moon. And it just gets quicker and quicker on the higher RPM. It's almost like, I don't want to say it has VTEC, but that's kind of the sensation you get because when you get it out on the, uh, on the open road, as you see, get past three, 4,000 RPM and it just hums. It's like a, like, a, like a little Japanese sports car. So here we go. I'll show you how easy the clutch engagement is. You don't want to get mowed over by the F-150. That would be a bad day. Or the Q5. Really, you don't want to get hit in this by anything apart from like a small bug. But here we go. Are you ready? Clutch is in immediate. Full throttle. 5,000 RPM. Hums like an absolute dream. 4,000, 5,000 RPM in a third. Look at that, and we almost hit 40 there. Granted, not quick. It's a darn sight quicker than the Samurai, like I mentioned, but no one's gonna confuse this vehicle for a high-performance uh, machine. But the coolest part about driving the uh, Rocky is look at the front. Look how big the windshield is. It's almost comical. Uh, it's, taller than, it's taller than my torso. So even though this is really a small car, huge amounts of headroom, Windshield is bigger than a Promaster van, I'm convinced of it. It's just the biggest windshield you've ever seen. And it's just an amazing place to spend time. I can't wait to get this off-road because if this handles off-road remotely as good as it handles on-road, it's going to be amazing. It, it really is because I'm super impressed with the overall, not only the quality of the Rocky, but the uh, driving experience, the hummy little engine. It just purrs. Everything in this car is precision made. And that is what is missing from so many of the modern day American off-roaders like the Wrangler. And you know, I've never driven the Bronco. Maybe it's exceptional, but I'm not sure that there's gonna be this level of quality in that because th you get the impression you could get in this car right now and drive this anywhere in the world, 10, 20,000 miles. I'll do your seatbelt for you, Thank Alex. You. And you're never gonna have a single problem. Now let's go check out the clothes and we'll call it a day. So there you have it, the Daihatsu Rocky, the cute, adorable, rugged little SUV you have never heard of, but one that I am over the moon about. For four grand, you, you can't buy a decent Wrangler YJ for four grand. You certainly can't buy a decent, um, like, first-gen 4Runner for four grand. Even Samurais are getting hard to find for this price. So this is kind of a hidden gem, I think. We're going to take it off-road in the next episode, see how it performs. But, yeah, I'm kind of in love with the tiny, tiny Rocky. Well, as always, this is Tommy for the Fastlane Classics. Check out tflcarandtvltruck.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews. And buy our shirts. I think these are pretty rad. And if you like the Rocky, maybe we'll make a Rocky shirt.